Article 1 is adopted. Tonight, President Donald Trump becomes the third commander in chief to be impeached. Here at home, another update in the battle over the Alamo redesign project. And two area governments want to warn you about predatory phone calls. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 tonight from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. After two months of investigations, hours of hearings and 16 witnesses, President Donald Trump has been impeached by the U.S. House of Representatives tonight. The president was impeached on two articles, one for abusing the power of his office for personal gain when he pressured the president of Ukraine to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden, another for obstructing Congress in its investigation. The vote followed six hours of debate on the House floor and split mainly down party lines. Looking away from these crimes against our country is not an option. Today's articles of impeachment against President Trump are an assault on our Constitution and the American people. A New Jersey Democrat who's reportedly considering switching parties did vote with Republicans against the impeachment and a conservative representative who left the Republican Party and became an independent this year voted with Democrats for impeachment. President Donald Trump insists he did nothing wrong. He reacted to his impeachment at a rally in Michigan tonight. It doesn't really feel like we're being impeached. Do you? <laughs> the country is doing better than ever before. We did nothing wrong. So what happens next? A trial is expected to begin in the Republican controlled Senate in January, where a vote of two thirds is necessary for conviction. No U.S. president has ever been removed from office by impeachment, but two past presidents have been impeached. Those are Presidents Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton. Here at home tonight, the Alamo redesign plan is moving forward. In a 7 to 4 vote today, the city's Historic and Design Review Commission approved a new location for the Cenotaph that sits right in front of the Alamo. It will be moved near the gazebo in Alamo Plaza with the spirit of sacrifice facing the church. During today's meeting, while several people supported that move, dozens told our Tiffany Huertas their fight is not over. And all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion passes. The Historic and Design Review Commission voted today on the first phase of the Alamo redesign. It includes street improvements, landscaping changes, and the most contentious item, the Cenotaph's new location. Those against this decision were shocked the commission approved the first phase. I'm very disappointed. Uh, we as Texans have not had a say in this. I've traveled all over the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I live in Burleson, so uh, people don't even know that they're going to move to Cenotaph. So this is, we have to now depend upon the lawsuit. The commission had tabled this item two weeks ago because of concerns over a pending lawsuit between a local indigenous group and the state and city. The lawsuit is over human remains found buried at the Alamo. Ramon Vasquez with the indigenous group says it's up to the court to decide. This is still in federal court. So the question is, is will the federal judge rule that this is a cemetery? And then the HDRC will have to revisit its decision. Vasquez is concerned about the human remains that were recently discovered buried at the Alamo. What's a good number? 10 bodies, 30 bodies, 50 bodies before we realize that we should probably slow this down. Let's do the right thing. Do an archaeological investigation of the entire site. Determine what the actual boundaries are of the cemetery and then plan accordingly. That was also Commissioner Gabriel Velasquez's concern. He voted against moving forward with the plan because he worries more human remains could be found. This is a very, very important situation that we have here that has lasting consequences should, should we create a situation that creates an irreversible situation where we've, we've just done something that can't, we can't take back. But many people are in favor of the project. I wouldn't form moving the Cenotaph to start with when they want to put it at that pocket park on Market Street. But the, the new plan calls for it about the same proximity of the Alamo, but on the south side, out of the battleground, so we can, you know, reclaim the battlefield itself. And so I'm all for that. For the first time since 1836, there's a real opportunity to restore Alamo Plaza to the historic place of respect it deserves and has never been given. 
Now, phase one will begin with the street closures in January 2020 to see a copy of the city's plan that was approved. Visit ksat.com slash news at nine. Myra. All right, a lot more to come on that. Thanks, Tiffany. Two local government entities are issuing warnings about what they're calling phone scams. Bear County says that people have reported receiving unsolicited calls from people telling them that they owe money for different reasons. The callers usually demand payment in the form of prepaid gift cards. Then they tell the worried victims to go buy those gift cards, call them back and give them the numbers on the card over the phone. Anyone who receives a suspicious call like this is told to call the main number for Bear, the Bear County offices at 210-335-2011. Also this week, the Jordanton Police Department reported having a similar problem in their area. A security guard accused of throwing a child to the ground. Police arrest a man accused of stealing a Purple Heart medal. And yet another family claims hackers talked to them through their ring security camera. Here's tonight's night at nine. A local man found guilty of forcing his girlfriend to have sex at gunpoint. Alan Arredondo Bratton on trial facing aggravated sexual assault charges recorded the sexual attack on his cell phone. What was caught on those videos is horrifying, but make no mistake about it, this is a sexual assault. A Boston security guard is accused of slamming an 11 year old to the ground. While on the ground, he placed his body on top of that young woman and began uh, pushing and twisting her neck. He says he tried to detain her for stealing, but police say he used excessive force. The security guard has pleaded not guilty. Here at home, less than a week after a wounded Army veteran's truck was stolen with his Purple Heart medal inside, Police have caught the suspect, Hector Bernal, taken into custody just moments ago. Bernal is now, now charged with two counts of vehicle theft, and police say there may be more charges to come. In California, a 17-year-old girl is in custody after police say she snuck into a small plane and drove it into a chain-link fence. The aircraft never became airborne, and no one was hurt. The female's motives are still under investigation. However, there is no indication of a domestic parents terrorism related motive. Nine students hospitalized in Louisiana after a school bus overturns. The school bus driver was issued a citation for driving without a permit. The exact cause of the crash is still under investigation. The U.S. Coast Guard seizes 18,000 pounds of cocaine worth more than $300 million. The drugs were taken from seven separate smuggling ships headed to the U.S. A family in Washington state says a stranger hacked into their ring security camera and talked to their two dogs. I got treats, get up. The homeowner says his wife and children were home when it happened. It was really violating. We didn't know how long they were watching us. Ring released a statement saying that it is possible for bad actors to gain access to accounts and they encourage users to use different passwords on different devices and for different services. American archaeologists unearthed two royal tombs in Greece. They date back to the Bronze Age, some 3,500 years ago. Inside the tombs, archaeologists found a gold ring and a gold pendant depicting an Egyptian goddess who protected the dead. The tombs also contained amber and amethyst. A California man with a pet possum kicked off of a JetBlue flight. He says he was able to fly from Orange County to Austin to spend time with family with no problem. But on his return flight, he was told he wasn't allowed to have the animal on board. He ended up switching airlines from JetBlue to United and was able to get back home. But after all the trouble, he says he'll think twice about flying with the possum next time. If you have an opossum, you might want to just drive. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. You know, <laughs> not I, one I've heard before. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel bad for what I'm about to say because I think uh, our producer really liked the uh, <laughs> awesome. I was walking yeah. around the Alamo area one night and I saw this scurrying in the bushes. And so I was like, oh, a cat, because I love cats. And so I went over there, not a cat, definitely. Uh, possum is not possum. happy to see me, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of got to let them mind their own <laughs> business. They do their own thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Katie Blake is with us tonight to talk about these temperatures. 
um, it, it was really cold this morning. It was really cold. A good yeah. morning to just like roll back over and then bundle up. Oh, yeah. If only we could. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but over the next couple of days, we'll turn our attention from talking about all this uh, cold weather, this cold air that has settled in to finally a shot at some rain. So some good things coming up in the forecast. Here's how things played out today. I mean, we had clear skies from start to finish. Really nice sunset out there. 28 our morning low record low temperature for today's date was 22. So we're not too far away from that. When you consider that our average low is around 41 this time of year. Yes, it was unseasonably cold this afternoon, but we did make it up to near 60 degrees uh, this afternoon. Current temperatures out there now. Things are already getting cold. Once again, we're down to 41 at the airport here in San Antonio. Some spots already below freezing. Bernie stage you're right at 30 degrees. 29 in Tarpley, well off to the west in Bandera County. 34 in Castroville and temperatures will continue to fall because we've got clear skies, I mean crystal clear skies and really dry air in place. Here are our dew points. So again, that's the measure of the moisture in the air. These numbers are way low. We've even got some single digit dew point ratings off to the west of 35. So what this means is that the air is very dry. So when the air is dry, it's able to heat up in the afternoon and cool down at night more efficiently. So the clear skies, the dry air, light winds that's going to send our temperatures overnight into the upper 20s here in San Antonio. So 29 the low temperature here in town, low to mid 20s, definitely not out of the question up in the hill country, but and then around San Antonio, we'll start you off tomorrow uh, with temperatures near 30 degrees. 55 by lunchtime, another good warm up tomorrow. 60 your afternoon high temperature with increasing clouds through the day on Thursday. This cloud cover is going to be the mid and high level cloud cover that we see the high thin clouds in the sky. Those will be moving in from the west, but the rain chances don't kick in until early on Friday. So here's Friday 6 a.m. You see that green sneaking in from deep south Texas. There's going to be a low pressure system sliding across the Lone Star State during the day on Friday and it is this low pressure system that's going to provide a little bit of lift for us to have some passing light shower activity really through a good portion of the day on Friday. I think our highest coverage of rain here in San Antonio will peak late morning through late afternoon and then as we get into the weekend that low moves away and will clear out just in time for the weekend. Most spots should expect around maybe a quarter inch of rain from Friday morning to Saturday morning before that low pressure system moves out. So tomorrow a cold start and then Friday is our kind of gray wet day. Things improve by Saturday. The weekend looks great early next week as we head into Christmas week. We'll warm you back up into the low 70s. There's nothing like a South Texas Christmas with a high temperature around 70 degrees. Rain doesn't look like an issue right now. Maybe a little bit of rain in North Texas by Christmas Day next week. Uh, and we'll of course have travel casts for the holiday coming up on our newscast later in the week and next week, Myra. Gosh, we've been so lucky with these weekends. I know how it is all timed out. I don't know. We'll take it. Does that I mean we've been good this year? I guess so. OK, there you go. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. You're watching Gays at News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, this is Sergeant Zachary Molina in Afghanistan. I want to give a special shout out to my beautiful wife, Clarissa, my two boys, Zachary and Isaiah, out in San Antonio. I love you, I miss you, and I can't wait to be home. See you soon.
The death sentence of a Texas man who has spent the past four decades on death row has been tossed out. The Texas Court of Criminal Appeals unanimously agreed to vacate Cesar Fierro's sentence, citing faulty instructions that were given to the jury during his trial back in 1980. Fieto was found guilty of capital murder in the 1979 robbery and murder of an El Paso taxi driver. But his attorneys argue that the only evidence that tied him to the crime was a teen's testimony and a confession from Fieto that the courts later agreed was likely coerced. They also say the jury was not told to consider things like Fieto's troubled childhood and substance abuse issues when they were deliberating his punishment. The Texas Tribune reports Fieto's conviction still stands, but instead of serving a death sentence. He'll serve life in prison. Turning now to tonight's top stories, a federal appeals court ruled today that the individual mandate of the Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional. That individual mandate requires Americans to buy health insurance. The decision likely pushes any Supreme Court action on the law until after the 2020 election. The ruling should not affect the millions of Americans who signed up for 2020 coverage recently. A lower Texas court must now consider whether the individual mandate can be separated from the rest of the law. The U.S. Department of State is advising Americans not to travel to Mexico. A travel advisory was issued today for the states of Colima, Guerrero, Michoacan, Sinaloa, and Tamaulipas. The State Department says that homicides, kidnappings, and robberies have increased in those areas. Other parts of Mexico are still on the list due to other crimes. Pet store puppies have now been linked to an outbreak of a drug-resistant bacteria in 13 different states. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says more than two dozen people have been sickened by what's called Campylobacter. The bacteria is most commonly transmitted by eating undercooked poultry. The CDC says most people reported getting sick after playing with puppies at Petland stores. Experts say even a healthy looking dog can carry and transmit this disease, so always wash your hands. Here at home tonight, some good news. If you're a fan of setting off fireworks on New Year's Eve, as of right now, there will be no restrictions in unincorporated parts of Bear County this year. Firework sales, they begin on Friday. There is no burn ban in place right now, but Bear County spokeswoman Monica Ramos says there is still a lot of dry grass and tall weeds in our area, so she's asking people to take extra precautions. The best recommendation that we can give anybody is to go watch a professional fireworks show. Don't take those into your own hands, but if you are going to do that, please, by all means, keep a bucket of water nearby. Always douse fireworks, even though they've already been set off or something. You never know, they still might be warm, so please dip them in a bucket of water before you put them in the trash can that might be next to your garage. The county will be operating a fireworks hotline from December 28th through January 2nd. That number is 210-335-FIRE-FIRE. We also have more information on our website. You can find that at ksat.com. And a reminder, it is illegal to have fireworks inside San Antonio city limits. You might hear noise in the background during KSAT News at 9. You want to know why? Our set is right in the middle of the always busy KSAT 12 newsroom. We are just feet away from reporters, producers, photographers, editors who were all working to put together the stories you see here on the News at 9 and throughout the day on KSAT 12. This is the assignment desk, really the control center of the KSAT 12 newsroom. Our assignment desk editor keeps track of all of these police and fire scanners to make sure our crews are headed out the door to see what's happening and make sure you know what's going on all around town. There's the KSAT 12 defenders tracking down the latest investigations and our weather team putting together an up-to-date forecast to make sure you are ready for your day. Streaming from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom is just one of the reasons this show looks and feels so unique and we're glad you're watching. We have some late breaking news coming into the KSAT 12 newsroom at this hour. Right now we know that San Antonio police are confirming a shooting that has happened at South Park Mall. This is a live picture from Sky 12 of that scene. Again, we are just getting word. The people in this newsroom, our crews, our team, we are all trying to gather information about what happened here. This is off I-35 and Southwest Military. You can see a heavy police, pre a heavy police presence there. Uh, we do know, we also just learned 
three people shot, according to the San Antonio Fire Department, which is also there on scene. Caution tape strung widely around this parking lot. We don't know exactly what might have led up to this, if this could have happened in the parking lot, if it happened inside the mall. We are still waiting to get more information, but we do have a crew headed to that scene and trying to gather information from SAPD as soon as they are available to give us details. But you can see, especially this time of year, shopping during the holidays, as people try to get it done after work, this is still a very crowded parking lot, even at this hour right now. A shooting confirmed at South Park Mall. Again, this is off of I-35 and Southwest Military. We're going to bring you the very latest as soon as we have it available, either here or on our website at ksat.com. Uh, stick with us for any new details. Let's find out what's trending tonight on our website. Let's go to ksat.com with RJ Marcus. All right, Myra, pretty interesting stories today on our website. And we start first with a uh, really kind of uh, look at some of the construction projects that have really kind of shaped uh, the downtown area this year. And it's a pretty unbelievable list of photos and um, just images that we have here of some stuff that has been being built throughout the year and yeah. you just don't realize how fast this stuff is going on. I know and it's changed mm -hmm. the shape of downtown, yes. the skyline, the mm -hmm. drives coming into downtown that we're all used to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the CPS Energy Headquarters, uh, that's a pretty big one, uh, the Southline Residences. So uh, a lot of cool buildings that are going up as people tend to sort of move back into the heart of the city. And uh, this is a really cool story. Credit Human on Broadway at the yeah, Pro. Yeah, the Broadway <laughs> corridor is just yeah. so vastly yeah. different from just a couple years ago. Yeah, our uh, digital journalist Rebecca Salinas did a great job with this story, so definitely check that one out. All right, moving on. Uh, this was kind of uh, gotten a lot of attention today, so the full lineup for next year's Stock Show and Rodeo has been released. Okay, finally. So there yes. are acts for every day at this point. Yes, we're filled. We're good. We have okay. acts for every day and uh, a lot of people not necessarily happy with the uh, oh. with the closing act. Casey and the Sun and the Sunshine Band. Oh. Your thoughts? Okay, um, not what I expect to close out the rodeo, right. but you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. To each their own. Hey. Look, I, hey, my mom loves this crowd. stuff. Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> um, they also announced that Bush is going to be here. I saw Bush uh, a long time ago growing up. So, uh, yeah, wow. that one would be a pretty interesting show. But when you look at the full lineup, it actually, I mean, there's a lot of interesting uh, acts here. There's some pretty big names. Yeah. And that's a, that's a nice thing about the rodeo when it mm -hmm. comes to the lineup. They've got yeah. a good mix. Mm -hmm. Kind of something for everybody. It's not just country. Yeah, you there know? we go. Yeah, uh, Keith Urban was really good a few years back. Yeah. Uh, that one I definitely suggest people go see that but now that we have the full list you can check it out on our website okay. all right last one here this story has gotten a lot yes. of love today share the oh, sharing so much love from me <laughs> yours truly oh i love her. okay Cher was in concert last night you were there yeah Your i wasn't here because i was with Cher. <laughs> well i was looking at Cher from a distance yeah yeah she's just as fabulous as ever uh, oh, that's a good way to describe it yeah I fabulous as ever and speaking of fabulous she really loves our uh, hotel emma down there at the pearl she well. tweeted about it Last night, uh, at some point, she said she just stayed at one of the most beautiful hotels ever, the, ho the Emma Hotel, San Antonio. And uh, she said that it's one of the most amazing hotels that she's ever stayed in. And that's got to be a lot yeah. coming from somebody like Cher, <laughs> yeah. who has stayed at it all, seen yeah. it all, exactly. done it all. Yeah, that is high praise coming from Cher. Now, funny part of the tweet was also she, uh, I guess, didn't know the story behind the Emma Hotel, okay. the Hotel Emma, which was the three Emmas. Remember, we did this story yes. for a throwback yeah, Thursday. Yeah, I remember. Yes, uh, I believe uh, Lexi Salazar put that story together. So um, she was very interested in that story of the how that ah, hotel came to be okay. made. <laughs> so should I tweet her back with the link to that story? I w you know what? I was going to. Yes, and then I think you should out. definitely okay. do that. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. mean, that sounds like a perfect plan. Sharon and Myra, definitely. Oh. <laughs> Sharon and Myra have been a thing Teaming for a up. while. There we she go. just doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is what is trending today, Myra. All right, thanks, RJ. Thank you. We'll be right back.
to go back to late breaking news. We are following on the city's south side. A shooting reported at South Park Mall that has been confirmed tonight by San Antonio police. You can see just how many police officers are there on scene and take a look at how many people are in that parking lot uh, who are certainly being affected by this. We know that three people have been injured. We are told that two people were transported to a hospital. Uh, we don't know exactly how all of this played out, whether it happened there in the parking lot, whether this shooting took place somewhere inside the mall. But certainly a lot of people um, headed to to malls all across the city this time of year to do their holiday shopping. So a scary situation for those folks out there. You can see a large area roped off with caution tape. We do have crews headed to this scene. They are gathering information as we speak. But we know that in the last hour, this shooting occurred here at South Park Mall off of I-35 and Southwest Military. We again know that three people were injured. Two of those people were taken to a hospital. We don't exactly know the extent of their injuries or how they might have been involved in the shooting. We also don't know if there could potentially be any suspects in custody or if police might be looking for whoever is responsible at this hour. But you're looking from Sky 12 of you over the J.C. Penny there and the parking lot just outside of it at South Park Mall where San Antonio police are investigating a shooting. We will continue to follow this and of course have the very latest for you coming up on the night beat at 10 o'clock and then you can always get the latest information on our website at ksat.com and all of our social media channels as well. That's KSAT News at 9 tonight. Thanks so much for watching.